So I haven't had much chance to go out painting lately. I've been mostly painting in the house, but I was able to get out yesterday and go to the marina. When I got there, I found out I had so many mishaps. Number one, they locked all of the doors to the marina. They now have locks on all of them, which they didn't use to. So I was able to go in there in the past. I couldn't this time. So I had to paint through the fence because no one was there to open anything up. Number two, I forgot my oil brushes. So I had everything all set up for oil painting. Luckily, I had my watercolors with me. So I started a little watercolor out there. You will see that uh, my boats moved, so I had to stop painting at a certain point. But uh, I got a good basic painting in, and then I came home and finished it for the last few minutes. That's my dogs wrestling over there. Anyway, I uh, decided to finish it at home because I thought maybe I'd turn this into a bigger oil painting. But anyway, I enjoyed myself getting out of the house, getting away from these two crazy doggies. No, they're not fighting. That's the way they play, believe it or not. So anyway, hope you enjoy the painting video and I hope you try it yourself. So I'm sitting out here, freezing my butt off. Yes, it's Florida, but we're in the 30s, so pretty cold. But uh, I'm looking at the marina here and all the different boats. This is the Gulfport Marina. And I think I've settled on, let me turn this around. It's a toss up between this boat here. Where are you? I have to show you through the, with the rust on it and the reflections in the water, which I like. And I think I'm gonna paint that one. The other one was this one here, which it's hard to show you because I really love the reflections of the trees all around this boat. And I may come back and do that one also, but I think today we're gonna do the boat that's out here. Even though it doesn't look all that interesting, I think the rust that's on it and the trees behind it will make it attractive. Sorry for zipping around with this camera, but a lot of pretty reflections, very overcast day. Starting from top to bottom, from back to front. Removing a little paint where I plan to put the boat. Kind of hard to draw and paint at the same time. This doesn't come perfect. But I'm not really looking for perfection. I'm looking for an idea that I can possibly take home and do something else with. It's beautiful out here. It's always nice when the boat has a little wear and tear or a little rust on it to give it some character. The police boat, they asked me to paint one time. I haven't gotten around to it yet though. So here it is now at home and I'm going ahead and finishing it. lighter to darker with watercolor. Reflections. And the darker colors emphasize the lighter colors. 
This is just a sketch in my little book, a memory for the day that I can look at and decide if I'd like to develop it further. I think I might actually like to paint this boat again with the boat behind it. So there it is all finished. A Tarpon Springs boat that I painted with watercolor. Another one that I painted from a photo I took out there. So I'm combining a painting I did here, a painting I did here, and photos that I took when I was out there looking at the sponges and all the different boats and all the reflective things. And I'm putting them all together and making my own painting with things that I liked that were all along the dock here. I haven't completely decided on the boat yet that's up front, but I want to at least start with the illumination and the golden tone in the background and across the water. That's what I'm starting with. I'm going to make very light wash with some yellow ochre. And I'm making it with a little bit of my orange and a little bit of my yellow. Tiny bit of my burnt red. Mix it all together. I need the tiniest little bit of blue. I don't want it to turn green, but I do Ooh. want it to kind of gel it a little. There you go. Now, I'm just going to put this on as a wash. <laughs> Blow off some of the excess. And you see that sort of has a yellow ochre look to it. This area is going to have a little more yellow in it. I need some blue, but I have to mix it with some orange because I do not want it green. Tiny bit of yellow. And teeny little bit of white to lighten it up a little. And get that in up here. I'm going back into the water area making a little more of the yellow ochre type of a color. Although I'm kind of rubbing it on, I do not want it on thickly. I need to be able to adjust it. Can't do that if I put it on too th thick. Good, that works, okay. So, in here is going to be the darker stuff. And coming up here, the boathouse will be here, the crane will be there. The big boat will be here with probably some of the sponges hanging off of it. Let this dry just a little bit and come back in and put a little bit of blue in here. Don't want it to mix with the gold or the yellow, so that's why I'm letting it dry first. So the advantage of acrylics is I can just keep layering and layering. and Just continuing to develop the mood of the painting. It does take just a couple of moments to several minutes and you've got it dry layered and you can go over it again with another layer. Can't do that with oil. Now, if I get this to where I want it, I can just leave it or I can go over it with oil and get those final strokes that everybody seems so enamored with and give it a little bit of texture that you might not get from your acrylic unless you want to add like a molding paste to it and then you get the texture in the acrylic too. So really acrylic can do almost anything oil can do and it's got some beautiful colors. 
So anyway, we're developing the little boathouse back here. And up here is going to be a boat. Maybe I'll hang some sponges from it. There'll be some poles in the water that the boat's attached to. And I'm hoping to make this beautiful light coming through here as the sun goes down. So in order to make this lighter, I have to make certain things darker. Try to emphasize the beautiful light that's coming through. So here's where we're at at this point. And we'll just keep working at it. So this is a painting I did, and I absolutely love the boathouse. I loved the boat in front of it. I loved the whole painting. But I want that boathouse a little farther back in my painting. I'm going to put it way back here in this painting. I like the way this painting looks with the boat up front, and I may do that boat. I'm not sure. I like these poles here, and I think I'm going to put that in this painting as well as some of the reflections and colors that are in this painting. So I'm kind of combining three paintings to get what I want here. And hopefully it will work out. And the biggest thing I have is also I have some photos of some boats that I just took this weekend. And I like the back of them. I like some of the things that were hanging off the boat and I think I'm going to probably copy that boat and put it here. I haven't decided yet if I want to put this in here. It's going to take up a lot of room and I might have to leave that out. I'm just not sure. So I have some calculating to do. Now this could be distracting. I kind of like it. It balances out the color over here and this is the stroke that I'm using because it's kind of showing a little current or wave action. Yes, it's going to go right into the sign. It's the only way. And this will all be blended together using a big brush here, not a little brush. Okay. This is the action I use when I'm trying to make this kind of water. It is not turbulent water, but there's current in it, little tiny waves that are being made by the force of the wind, mostly. Okay. Now, I'm going to use the side of this brush to kind of put a wash on some of this. And then go ahead and straighten out the action. Come back in, put light on this. But I just want to fill the canvas with some color. Another layer is down. And I just continue to build layers. Example is the sky is not done yet. So I will continue to lighten that up in some spots, darken it in others. And you think, oh my goodness, you know, don't do that. But when you come back in with your red and your blue, making your violet, maybe a little white, a little more blue, and a little more white, because you don't want it too dark, but I want some here and there that's darker, a little more water, and a little more white. Now you're re-wetting it, small strokes.
back into the light right here. I want this a little lighter. Oops, I'm sorry. A little lighter right there. And then a little more blending in here. So I'm going to go into the lighter so I can blend back into that. That gets rid of that line of demarcation, which sometimes you want it and sometimes you don't. Don't necessarily want a hard line up here. A little more white right there. Blend, blend, blend. I kind of want that to look like the light is going down. That's why it's brightest right there. Just a tiny bit more orange over here. I'm wiping my brush off and drying it. Going back into the light so I can blend the light into the dark. So I don't have such a strong line there. Okay. So there's a little more work on the sky. Now the next thing I'm going to do is draw in the boat that I want and the buildings that I want because I can't figure out the reflections until I do that. Slowly coming along. Still need to adjust some things. Like I decided to put in the poles on the left, which means I need to raise up that little sign there. I'm not putting the sidewalk in. So that little red triangle has to come up higher. And luckily, guess what? This is acrylic. I can take it out and move it along. So it's kind of getting my feeling. I'm making decisions as I go along. Usually you have these things decided beforehand, but I'm deciding as I paint. So this brush I rinsed out thoroughly. It looked perfectly clean. A little Murphy's oil soap, and I think you can see that these suds are not perfectly clean. Now this is acrylic. If you want to keep your brushes forever, you just clean them really thoroughly, all the way down into that ferrule. If you don't, your brushes will get stiffer and stiffer all up in here to the point that only little tips will work, and then they're garbage. Get down in there and clean them. Don't rub too hard because you don't want to ruin the actual bristles. In this case, these are boar bristles, so they're fine. I'm doing this with one hand, but you can see there's color there. That means there was paint in this brush. Okay, that's how you keep your brushes really, really good. And this happens to be an Ultrek 209 series. I love this brush. Colors I pick up down here, I just want a little bit of color. Now let's see if it'll work. There. That gave me something. Not enough, but something. There. And of course we need this one going here. I'm going to clean this off, and then I'm going to use a smaller one. It does not matter how sloppy these lines are, I will straighten them all out when I redo the sky. I 
I want a lot of very casual, impressionistic detail, not fine detail. a few dark spots here and there. It needs to be dark, but it also needs to kind of, whoops, smear in a little bit. And I don't want it perfect. I don't want it perfect. It's hard to explain, but I want this to be more artistic than, say, some kind of a graphic artist would do. In some instances where you can't get the paint back off, you just paint over it. It's acrylic. And let it dry a little bit and then I'll come over it and match the color beside it better. And that's better. Not perfect. Better. There you go. As this dries, I'll add some more color back into it. I want this very almost smeared looking. I want you to feel like you're getting the light kind of coming through. Anything that looks too dark, put some light on it. That's still wet. To let that be a bit. Let's see if this is dry. So you get the idea. Now I have to go back here and work on this just a little bit more and a few of the little buildings in the back, add a little more color to the water. I'm not gonna film everything, but you get the gist of what I'm doing here. Dark here.
I have to keep going back and forth from photo to photo. Yes, I'm in the process of moving this sign up a little higher. So coming up now, I'm going to slowly start darkening this. I'm going to put a glaze on it because I want it to show even more light contrasted with the dark sky. Okay, I'm just going to show you in this one little spot. I have taken some glazing medium, mixed it with my dioxazine purple, and come in and put it on here. You can put on as much or as little as you want. You can leave it on thick if you want in certain spots. I want this to look like nighttime and I want to be able to turn some lights on, which is why I'm putting in some dark stuff. Then if I get it on too heavy in any one area, I can take a rag and I can go in and I can smooth it out or remove as much or as little as I want. Just like that. So I'm trying to get a little bit darker effect. Why? Because I want to emphasize the light coming through here. And the only way I can do that is if I make everything else darker, right? So I also said in the beginning that I might do some oil on this. And this is Cobra water mixable oil that I'm messing with right now. Okay, so go in. Wipe that down a little because you want it on very smoothly. And it also harmonizes the whole painting. Because we don't want big chunks of purple like right here. I'm going to go ahead and blend it in nicely. And then I'm just going to kind of let that sit, tack up a bit. But I think it gives the whole painting a little more harmony. And now I want to go in and add just a little bit of light here and there. Here's a quick few photos of Anderson Park and Tarpon Springs on the day that I went there. Freezing cold day, trying to get a few photos and some ideas. Okay, I think I now have a much better look of the night than I did before. Yes, I wanted that light to be behind, going behind the boat here and across here. I might even put a little bit more of the purple right in here. We'll see. But that glaze is on there. I'm going to let it dry. And then... I'm going to put in a little tiny bit of light here and there for extra detail. And I'm going to put a couple of lights shining behind there. Just like this light that's here. Right there. Try to make that just a little bit brighter. And then this painting will be done. This painting's done. I put some lights in. Little lights sparkling here and there in the background up on top of the pole between the sun down here and the light from here it's casting a, a a glare or a haze over this i guess that's like a sponge collector and those are the sponges so there's a little bit of light cast on the poles beside the boat a little bit of light up on top of the sign 
into the water we have some of the yellowish lights. Anyway, I've enjoyed doing this video with you, and I hope you join me again next time. And remember, you can paint too.